Welcome to another edition of A Vapor's Journey. I'm Jason Hughes here at Xavier Penguin Studios, now sponsored by Move to Vapor. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, some mods, modding, and my experiences with an all-new, custom-built, one-of-a-kind so far, vaping device that my friend Bobby Jeffers at Angry Trains Mods has gone ahead and made for me. He calls it the Ghost Catfish. At first I'm sitting there going, Ghost Catfish? What kind of name is that? Well, what it is is that he has built this device right here. As you can tell, it's a translucent device using an 18650 battery. We got a 10 mil bottle of juice that's got a hose that comes up into a custom refit authentic Patriot atomizer. Uh, I've currently got it built out with a single coil. Uh, he had made it with a stovetop coil for me at first, but I kind of messed that up playing around with cotton and the whole nine yards. So what that left us with is a device that was completely custom, something that I'd never seen before. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the Rio Grande, which is something that I had been looking for. I love my drippers. I love the flavor. I love the huge clouds of smoke. I hate dripping. Every two puffs, I'm having to reload the blasted thing. Okay, sure, there are devices out there that have the one mil, one and a half mil drip wells. I just wasn't into it. I wanted something that I could load once and puff on for a while. This was the solution. Let's go ahead and give it a vape. As you can see, that is a heck of a cloud. Great flavor delivery. I know that's got a lot more to do with my build and the uh, material that I'm using for wicking more than anything else, but I am using boiled cotton. Thank you from my buddy Colin. And I am using uh, a 26 gauge canthal. Once again, thanks Colin. And uh, I, I've kind of recently been getting into the whole sub oming culture. Note to all you novice users, sub oming is potentially dangerous. Don't play around with it until you've got somebody in room who can talk you through it and you've made sure that you're matching your device to the type of coil you want to build. You don't want to build too low of a coil. You can cause yourself and your device serious harm. Be careful when sub -oming. I did go ahead and test this out. I'm barely sub ohm at 0.85 ohms and as you can tell it just it just works. Right now I got a Sony VTC4 battery in here. I've got uh, 10 mil, well <laughs> not even close anymore, but I had 10 mil of my favorite move to vapor juice and let's vape it again. Where'd he go? There he is. I'm very happy with this. I feel like it was a good investment. It definitely suits all the needs. Uh, let's talk about fit and finish, build quality. Yeah, sorry P. Basardo, I'm kind of stealing your shtick here. But uh, let's talk about this. Uh, this is a what I would consider a, a hybrid semi-mechanical mod. I know that uh, Bobby is kind of adamant that he wants to call all of his devices a, uh, you know, a, a pure mechanical. But what we do have in here, and I'll break this down in a moment, let you see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go, breaking down the Ghost Catfish. First of all, I asked Bobby why he wanted to name it the Ghost Catfish. And he had said, well, it's a clear, ghost-like, bottom-feeding device. And, all right, in retrospect, it makes total sense. What we've got here is four uh, flat-topped Phillips screws that hold the whole thing together. Uh, admittedly, I've kind of loosened them some, so that way I wouldn't be here unscrewing all day. Our lid pops straight off. And as you can see, we've got our 18650 battery and our 10 mil bottle of juice. The juice feeds up this hose via pressure, so all i got to do is squeeze. Comes up to our atomizer. The device itself fires with this button. We'll go on from there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop this battery out so that way you can see everything about it. One of the things that I found kind of impressive is even in a, you know, would-be production device, I really like this spring assembly. I mean, we got good contact, springs down. I know we're getting some shadow there, sorry folks. And it's all on this thick piece of copper with a connector that ends up going up to my negative terminal. Positive terminal, positive post, once again, thick piece of copper. It is nubbed. I have not been able to get a uh, larger button cell battery in there, such as the Ultrafire, but anybody who buys an Ultrafire is kind of asking for it anyway. But all of my flat, uh, all of my flat 
top uh, 18650s have worked fine. Popping our juice bottle out, simple as dismantling it. Let me drop my tool there. It's not really necessary for this. 10 mil bottle. I pop it out. I fill that. I'm good to go. You'll notice I've gotten some juice in there. That's something that I have noticed. You kind of got to be careful or you're going to get juice everywhere. The whole device dismantles for easy cleaning. Speaking of which, let's grab a little paper towel and have that on standby just in case. Now you can see the circuitry in there. Again, this is why I'm more eager to call it a hybrid mod as opposed to a mechanical mod. Our tactile switch fires by going ahead and connecting our positive, or pardon me, our negative terminal into our resistor or transistor rather, and off she goes. Uh, you can see here, this uh, this is the tube that connects our bottle and hose. Very cool stuff. Now earlier I mentioned that this is a modified a modified Patriot, and you're about to see why. Uh, anybody with a sharp eye may have already noticed it. But taking a look at this Addy, which this is the first full clear atomizer cap that I have seen, and I do kind of enjoy it. I, I had concerns that the plastic was going to warm up, it was going to alter my taste, and that's not the case. It, it does very well. It can get a little warm, especially when I'm hot boxing or really chiefing on this thing. But aside from that, what we're dealing with here is your typical three post uh, Patriot build. Uh, I could run dual coil on this, I don't. Uh, I haven't felt the need to. I'm sure some of you guys out there that are, you know, looking for monster clouds, you're going to do that. You might be looking at an additional air hole on this. Uh, you'll notice I've only got the one that I point directly at the coil when I'm using it. But this uh, this pin, this tube, which uh, I can get out, and I've had out, but honestly, once I took it out, it was kind of a bear to deal with. So I'm I'm doing this for you guys. Uh, oop, yeah, he does not want to play nice. I had to tap him back in last time I dismantled it, and I'm, I don't really feel like tearing it apart at this point. But you get you get the idea. Basically what happened is that it looks like Bobby drilled straight down through this plate. The seal on this is tight enough that I'm not getting juice leakage as a result of that. I'm mostly getting juice leakage as a, fact, uh, as a result of the fact that I'm kind of an idiot and just get juice everywhere. But uh, otherwise... Very cool device. Let's go ahead and, you know, moist fire this without our tank and tube. And there you go. Uh, like I said, I'm running a 0.85 ohm build on it. I'm sure some of you guys could get a little more adventurous. Once again, sub omen can be dangerous. So pay attention to your uh, batteries capacities. There's some great, uh, there's some great uh, documents out there about what's safe to run on what battery. Uh, maybe I'll try and get a link up to that for you guys. Uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and reassemble. So I dumped my tube without paying attention. Good job. Reassembly is simple. Squitch my tube on there. Squitch the bottle back on there. And as you can see, I'm getting just a little bit of a uh, little bit of juice popping out from there. Whoop. And we're resaturated. Good to fire. Burning the crap out of myself, but that's all good. Put our cap back on. And bolt her up. I've got a fuzzy on the table. That's outstanding. And I closed the tool I needed, so we're going to edit that bit out. <laughs> or not. I'm getting head shakes from Xavier. That's outstanding. So we're just going to reassemble. Good long screws. Uh, does seem to have the brass fittings for the uh, bottoms of these. We're not screwing directly into plastic. Uh, I was real happy to see that. One of the things that uh, is important to note is that Bobby uh, is very customer centric, which is important to me. It's important to the move to vapor culture that the customer come first. So when I heard that he's got a one year warranty on uh, parts and craftsmanship, that really made me happy. Uh, the only thing, uh, the only thing he said that uh, he wouldn't be willing to warranty is if you got pissed off and chucked the thing at the wall, then you're looking at 20 bucks to replace your case. Uh, 
one of the things, uh, one of the, you know, ooh-ahs that I got when I was dealing with this is I was showing a buddy of mine at my principal job, which we won't go into. He goes, holy crap, man, what'd you do? Take a Raspberry Pi case and build yourself a device? And I think that's actually kind of part of its charm is it's, you know, uh, it's a little gritty. It's a little, you know, it's a not what I would consider a you know, high manufacture product. It's not going to be your Sigeli. It's not going to be your Proveri. It's not going to be the thing that cost you a thousand dollars. This device cost me 100 bucks as it sits ready to vape. So again, ghost catfish, angry train mob mods, dear God, mobs, mobs. Am I playing video games again? Angry train mods. Look him up. Bobby Jeffers. Good guy. Give him a call. Get yourself one of these, you won't be disappointed. And that's Jason saying it. We've got a device here with a tactile switch that goes back and touches a transistor, which is the actual switch. The transistor then dumps whatever's in my battery straight up to the atomizer. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, I can't say enough about this. Fit and finish. I've got four screws that hold my top case on. That's for charge, uh, changing batteries. Uh, then I can get access to my bottle of juice. There you go. If you're looking for a full breakdown kind of thing, you would be looking at a very Rio-like device, save for that switch. That switch is completely new. I've never seen it done before. It's awesome. Uh, we've got heavy gauge, uh, heavy gauge copper wire that's going through, connecting everything together. He's got spring-loaded terminals that aren't just springs. Very cool. Good fit and finish. Good appearance. Good vape. I can't recommend this device enough. Again, this is the Ghost Catfish from Angry Train Mods. Thank you, Bobby, Bobby Jeffers. Dang, one of these days I'll say your name without tripping over it. Uh, once again, Jason with A Vapor's Journey. Have a good day.